FBI informant has just been revealed in the biggest scandal in recent U.S. history by Al Wasteman for FreedomDaily.com. We are now receiving reports that back in 2013, Carter Page was working as an undercover employee for the FBI. It seemed that he was assisting the FBI in building a case against Evgeny Buryakov. We now know that in March of 2016, Page was an FBI informant, which led to a, built, a guilty plea from Buryakov. In uh, 2013, the U.S. Department of Justice, Southern District of New York, officially indicted a Russian operative, Evgeny Buryakov. Preet Bahara, Preet Bahara, the uh, United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, and John P. Carlin, Assistant Attorney General for National Security, announced that Evgeny uh, Buryakov, a.k.a. Zenya, pled guilty today to conspiring to act in the United States as an agent of the Russian Federation without providing prior notice to the Attorney General. The FBI obtained the recordings after Spirshev, Sporishev, excuse me, attempted to recruit an FBI undercover employee, UCE1, who was posing as an analyst from a New York-based energy company in response to requests from Spor Sporishev, UCE1, provided. Sporashev with uh, binders containing purported industry analysis written by UCE1 and supporting documentation relating to UCE1's reports, as well as covertly placed recording devices. In 2016, Reuters published a story based on the ongoing court case explaining court records and how the FBI built their case against Buryakov. Reuters went on to detail the FBI UCE, one undercover employee with sharp detail. New York Reuters, the uh, FBI eavesdropped on meetings involving Russian intelligence personnel in New York City, including a suspected spy posing as a trade representative by hiding records in binders containing supposedly confidential information about the energy sector, U.S. prosecutors said. The hours of covert recordings from 2013 were disclosed in papers filed in Manhattan Federal Court on Tuesday in the case of Evgeny Buryakov, a Russian citizen who U.S. prosecutors say posed as a banker while participating in a Cold War-style spy ring. According to prosecutors, in April of 2012, Spuryashev uh, met an undercover FBI employee posing as an analyst at a New York energy firm at an oil and gas industry conference. Over the next two years, they met to discuss the industry and other economic and political issues, prosecutors said, with Spuryashev uh, uh, providing uh, gifts and cash for information. In 2013, the FBI employee began providing Spuryashev with the binders containing purported industry analysis he wrote supporting documents and covertly placed recording devices, prosecutors wrote. April 2017, the New York Times, while writing a story about Carter Page and at the same time trying to set up the fake Democrat created Russian collusion narrative outlined Page's connections to the Trump campaign. And at the same time, they also went on to reference Page's prior link to the Buryakov case. If you ignore the narrative, you discover the UCE1 description is Carter Page. Russian intelligence operatives tried in 2013 to recruit an American businessman and eventual foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign who is now part of the FBI investigation into Russian interference into the American election, according to federal court documents and a statement issued by the businessman. The businessman, Carter Page, met with one of three Russians who were, uh, was eventually charged with being undeclared officers with Russia's foreign intelligence service known as the SVR. The FBI interviewed Page in 2013 as part of an investigation into the spy ring, but decided that he had not known the man was a spy and the Bureau never accused Mr. Page of wrongdoing. 
The court document says that Mr. Page, who founded an investment company in New York called Global Energy Capital, provided documents about the energy business to one of the Russians. To record their conversations, the FBI inserted a listening device into binders that were passed to the Russian intelligence operatives during an energy conference, according to a former United States intelligence official. Okay, and it's here, the application to be first certified by the director of the FBI. Okay, full memo. Consider the Times article from 2017 against the backdrop of the Reuters article from 2016. Now take into consideration the DOJ release from 2016. It is more than evident that Carter Page was the undercover employee for the FBI back in 2013. Carter Page was working for the FBI. Page was the analyst from a New York-based energy company who began providing spore Sporeshev uh, with the binders. In 2017, the New York Times used info from a former intelligence official alludes to the narrative that the FBI slash page connection. The New York Times attempts to change the entire relationship between Carter Page and the FBI. On October 21st, 2016, the FBI claimed to a FISA court to gain a Title I surveillance war warrant and that Carter Page was working on behalf of foreign governments against the U.S. Carter Page was working for them as an FBI undercover employee in 2013 and remained the primary FBI witness through May of 2016. Was Page working as an FBI undercover employee who was responsible for busting of a high-level Russian agent in 2013? Was he still an employee throughout the court? case until May of 2016. How can it be that on October 21st, 2016, he was put under a FISA Title I surveillance warrant as an alleged Russian agent when he was allegedly working for candidate Trump? Perhaps he was working for the DOJ or the FBI and they knew he wasn't the DOJ, NSD, and FBI possibly lied to get the warrant possibly. Conservative Treehouse reports the entire FISA title one surveillance authority over Carter Page was cover, most likely retroactive cover for the DOJ and FBI conducting surveillance on the Trump campaign. The DOJ National Security Division and FBI Counterintelligence Unit didn't care about Page uh, because to them he was a useful tool. It wasn't Page they needed per se, they just needed someone, anyone, who had contact with the Trump campaign that they could apply the label foreign agent upon. The DOJ slash FBI just needed someone they could position to gain the FISA Title I surveillance approval that would retroactively make all prior campaign surveillance legal. Who Carter Page was simply checked the right boxes. Page wasn't a plant or a participant. He was a useful body upon which they could attach a label to justify their surveillance and monitoring. Nothing more. Carter Page testified to the House Intelligence Committee that the DOJ and FBI officials leaked his identity, his role in the Buryakov case, to the media. This is secondary and direct confirmation from Page himself that he was indeed the FBI UCE-1. Okay, so here's the paperwork. F felony number one, illegal leaking of my identity as male one in U.S. versus Evgeny uh, Buryakov, Igor Sporshev, and uh, Victor Podobny. On April 3rd, 2017, reporters at ABC News and BuzzFeed disclosed my identity as a male one in the 2015 case. This particular incident follows an increasing series of similar revelations about other politically motivated unmaskings in 2016. It relates to my brief interactions in 2013 with Victor Pradab Prad Pradabnev or whatever a junior attache assigned to the permanent mission 
of the Russian Federation to the United Nations. Um, so they, they're saying here that he was used as a, as a tool to get a FISA warrant on, but he was working for the FBI. In, in, he, he was the one that helped them get this Russian in 2013. So I don't buy the story of he's just, you, yes, he was used as a tool, but I'm thinking he was well aware. Why isn't he under arrest, so to speak? You see what I'm saying? Um, and then I found out that uh, Carter Page was also working in the 90s for the DNC. So you see, he, he, either he was in on it, I really don't care. But we know basically the bottom line now is that Carter Page was used in order to get a FISA warrant because they couldn't get a FISA warrant on Trump. But it's kind of uh, it's kind of weird that Carter Page was working and helped the FBI in 2013 nail these uh, Russians, okay? And then find out that he was working for the DNC in the 90s. So how come now he's working for the Republicans? Why the switch from Democrat to Republican? You see, it doesn't make any sense that he didn't know about it. Um, or he didn't know about it. I don't know. But look, we see the corruption in the FBI that they had to get to Trump somehow, and they would do it by any means necessary. So until more information comes out, we're just at the point that we know the FBI uh, would use anybody just to get their FISA warrant, bottom line in order to get to Trump. That's, that's, that was their whole plan. But now their plan is coming out and people are finding out what's going on. And uh, lo and behold, uh, justice will be served eventually, even though it's taking time. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.